what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, what's up, people, it's me, I'm L-Tendy 27, you know who I am, Thundercats are on the move, Thundercats are loose, honey, he's about the business of dipping spoons into sugar bowls, anyway, real girls do real things, so as to make it easier for insertion, maybe, no means no, and yes means no, what up, 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 what's good, people, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, people, it's me, L-Tendy 27, and I am back for yet another review. This will be our review for P-Valley. It is season two. It is episode nine. It is entitled Snow. Now listen. This might be my least favorite episode of the season. Probably because I kind of predicted everything that was going to happen before it happened. And I don't like when it's that easy for me to predict. I like to be surprised. I like for them to throw me, you know, shit that I wasn't prepared for. And I ain't like that. I saw a lot of this coming. But, I mean, go back and look at the end of my last review and you'll see a lot of shit that I called actually happen. So we start off with one thing that I said was going to happen. Uh, Haley gets the strippers to start promoting... Um, Andre's campaign, so we see them on commercials, the day of elections, they're down at the polls, getting people to come and vote, and so forth. Um, we, you know, we then see Patrice Woodbine come on a truck, and she's stripping and twerking, and got a pole on the fucking truck and shit, and she making it rain with the money that Corbin gave her. And stuff like that. I don't really think she has a chance in hell of winning, but hell, who the hell knows? That would be out of the blue. That would come straight out of the blue. Like, nobody would see that coming if they made Patrice Woodbine the winner of the elections. After that, we see Miss Ernestine. She at the hospital. She fighting with the nurses and the doctors. And, you know, she is hallucinating and thinking one of the nurses is her daughter trying to get her to going on the glory and she's fighting it with the tooth and nail so we see miss ernestine is doing everything in her power to fight she's fighting she's fighting the people physically but she's fighting against covid and fighting you know death and trying to stay alive so i guess that's good we then see murder and uncle clifford baby they in the kitchen fucking some people say it's nasty to fuck in the kitchen but i fucked in the kitchen i mean i fucked in every room in my house that i can think of Every crevice, every corner of my... There's nowhere... If you ever come to my house, there's nowhere in the house that's safe. Everywhere um, in my house has ash juices, dick juices, probably nut, ball gravy, and all kinds of other CD and, a, and just, you know... Yeah, everything is everywhere. If you sit anywhere, yeah, you're sitting in some stuff. Anyway, um, the part... More than them having sex in the kitchen, the part that disgusted me the most is the fact that they said that they eat grits with sugar in it. If you are watching this and you're subscribed to me and you eat your grits with sugar in them, just go ahead and unsubscribe now. We cannot be friends. We don't. I don't. I don't know who you are. Nobody. How I grew up, you do not eat no goddamn sugar and no goddamn grits. You put salt and pepper. I might can go along with you if you want to put cheese in your grits. I don't really care for cheese in my grits. I need butter, salt, and pepper. Not margarine. Not margarine. Butter, real butter, salt, and pepper in my grits. Not no goddamn sugar. But that's for you clandestine people that eat all kinds of nefarious shit and put all kinds of shit in your mouth. Don't ever talk about talk to me about the shit I put in my mouth. If you eat sugar in your grits, the shit is nasty. Anyway... They go on to talk about um, Lil Murder possibly going on tour with Tina Snow. Um, Lil Murder seems not quite sure on how to deal with his newfound fame um, just yet. He's 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 not accustomed to it yet. It doesn't quite feel good yet. Um, and then we also see Uncle Clifford bracing himself. For the loss of both his grandmother, Miss Ernestine, and both and Uncle Clifford, Lil Mur not Lil Murder, Uncle Clifford is like me, it's a realist. And when something like a Lil Murder comes along, you figure, girl, I'm gonna get a couple romps in the hay, get a couple good bust downs, and eventually he gonna tire out of me, 
and going on with life. And I'm okay with that. I already see it coming. I'm bracing myself. And it's okay. Girl, so that's kind of where he is. Down to the pink, Haley and Mississippi, they kind of discuss Haley's plans for leaving, making sure she got everything in place and all of that stuff. Haley says she's leaving after um after she finds out about the casino referendum. She said, yeah, you leaving, bitch, I'm leaving too. Once I find out what the fuck they got going on here and, and what they're going to do, maybe I'm out of this fucker too. I ain't mad at it. Then we see Mississippi goes in to try to get some water for her water bottle, bottle and she had this awkward uh, moment with Diamond where they have this awkward, you could tell he's awkward moment where you could tell they still care about each other. They still got feelings for each other, but they're uncomfortable because of what happened at murder night at the end of last season. And so, in all of this interaction, then you see, because he's cooking like wings or something, Big Bone, come bring it up, bring it up. Talk about some. Listen, where's my wings? Because she might be thirsty, but I'm hungry. I was like, oh. Anyway, we see the lady practice, the ladies practicing for um for the re 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 reopening and or however many re reads it is, the reopening. At first it seems like Mercedes, she got a hang of it. She, you know, she's back on the pole. She's, you know. But she can't handle the pole. Mm -mm. That shoulder done all the way gave out. Um, she damn near falls on Mississippi. And Mississippi like, girl, let me get my ass out of the way. And Roulette was like, mm -hmm. y'all make sure y'all don't put me on the pole with that bitch. Because she ain't going to fuck me up. And they almost get into a little skirmish or whatnot. But um, um, as usual, you know, Mercedes is defensive. And she starts blaming everybody but her raggedy ass self. Let's be clear. I keep telling y'all, Mercedes is one of my least favorite characters because she makes all of the wrong decisions and has bad decision making. But you want to blame everybody else in the free world for your own bad decision making. It ain't nobody else's fault but yours. Get over it. Girl. Um, then they start to talk about, Roulette brings up, listen, as long as it don't affect my money tonight, I don't care. And they start talking about the door and the money on the floor versus the money on the door. And that's when Mercedes kind of gets upset with like, well... Because Haley was like, well, Keisha going to get the door. Because she the one who bringing in all of the people. Because um, Mississippi bringing in all the people. So she going to get the door. And Mercedes was upset about that. And that caused a whole argument. And so Mississippi was like, well, fuck it. Let's rethink it. Let's, everybody can get let's, let's split it four ways. Me, Mercedes, Roulette, and Whisper. And Haley was like, no, bitch, you need this money. Hell no. Nah. That's, that's not what we plan. We ain't doing that. So Mississippi gets all up in her feelings and storms out um, and say, bitch, y'all do this reopening without me, bitch, because I ain't next and whole. And she storms out and Uncle Clifford goes after her. And she just has that, man, listen, I ain't got it no more. I'm way past my prime. I'm way past retirement. I don't have it. That whore is better than me. I don't, it's not just the show that I don't have it no more. I'm, I'm, this, this, I'm, it's over for me. That Uncle Clifford tells her, listen, that just simply means that it may be time to reassess or um, rethink your own dreams. Really take a look and take stock and what do you want? What are your dreams? What do you want to do? And make and make it time for a plan, and, you know, a new plan, strategize a new plan. And she told him, bitch, are you talking about me or yourself? I was with her. Big Bone and Mississippi bump into each other and have words. And Mrs. and Big Ball tell him, bitch, I know you. I know all you got going on. These walls talk. Girl, you don't know me. The walls tell lies sometimes. She said, bitch, I know you leaving tomorrow. How the fuck you know that? Because the walls got mouth. Child. She know Mississippi leaving. Mercedes, while she was at the paint talking to Uncle Clifford, she ended up getting a text from the coach's wife, Farrah. She says, I need you to meet me down here somewhere. So... We see Mercedes goes, and she goes to this museum, and there's this big exhibit, a collection of pictures, and it's called the Mercedes Experience. And it's all of the photos that Farrah took of Mercedes when she was dancing on a pole at the coach's house. And um, Farrah the, tells Mercedes, listen, I don't file for divorce. Me and the coach are not going to be together no more. She still want to fuck Mercedes. Mercedes said, hey, bitch, I ain't down with the cooter. I might have had a good time with you, but 
bitch, I'm, I'm, I'm not a lesbian. So she tells her that. And now, but the way Mercedes was staring at those photos, it tells me she, that might feed into what Uncle Clifford was telling her about um, finding a new path, reassessing your own dreams. So maybe she can see herself as a model because the photos were beautiful. They were beautiful photos, just gorgeous, wonderful photos. So I wonder if now she will um, take stock in who she is and, and, and realize her own self-worth and maybe not necessarily become a model or something like that, but really do something that helps her explore more of who she is as a person. Back down to the paint. Haley got um Haley tells Nineveh, uh, trans sister, listen, this shit you trying to sell it out, that shit ain't good. Here's somebody, go buy some good shit. Cause it's gonna be a lot of people. It'll be some of this raggedy ass shit. And after that, she gets ill. She gets some morning sickness. She go vomit in that nasty ass toilet. And Whisper sees her and say, Oh, bitch, you ready for a set of twins? Cause Whisper sees that she's pregnant. I was like, hmm. That whole having twins. So Haley is pregnant, as we can see from Andre's child. Child, when is she gonna tell him that? And then we have the re 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 reopening. I don't know how many reads it is, girl. Whatever it is, it's the reopening. Health department chick is at the dough. Bitch, I said fifty percent. It's gonna be fifty percent capacity. Bitch, I got on a whole plastic suit. Now, if you was real girls with real things. Um, health department lady, you should have had on a whole hazmat suit, not that little plastic suit you had on. But she had on a plastic suit and a mask and um, a shield and everything. But Uncle Clifford talked her into allowing... I'm sorry, y'all. It's late. I'm tired. He talked her into allowing uh, more than 50% in, which allowed that gang to come in. Now, what gang? The same gang. Remember the guy Pico who murdered slaughter executed killed last episode his name was pico and he was in the game i think it's called chief Five chief or something like that but he in that game he was in that game and so they were outside because the um 50 percent capacity had already been filled and so when murder got uh, not murder when uncle clifford got the lady to let more than 50 percent in that allowed the gang to come in so that's the setup right there Remember, that's another thing I had called. I had said Maine was going to come down there looking for a murder. I said that. So, um, in the locker room, Toy in the back and with the rest of the girls in the locker room coughing and sneezing. And Uncle Clifford come back there and see this whore and say, bitch, get the fuck out of my place. You around here to damn near kill my goddamn grandma. And you around here still thinking you finna come over here and strip and be coughing and shit. You the whole reason why we in this shit in the beginning. Girl, get your ass the fuck out of here. So he fired her. I wasn't mad at him. Fire her ass. Murder and, uh, Lil Murder and Tina Snow. Well, before that, Uncle Clifford. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so tired. Girl, I'm tired. Sorry. Murder and, uh, Lil Murder and, uh, went on his Instagram and all his social media and announced, yeah, me and Tina Snow, uh, Megan the Stallion. But on the show, Tina Snow, me and Tina Snow, we finna come down and have our first um, part of our tour that's gonna begin at the paint. Y'all meet us at the paint tonight, so everybody and their mama gonna come to the paint now. So they arrived, they got on furs off um, and shit, and got on furs and shit, and looking all nice and rich and shit. And so they go in the back, and, and Lil Murder shows um, Tina Snow all around. So when Tina Snow goes in there to go look at one part of the room, Uncle Clifford and Murder by themselves, they all flirty, flirty with each other and stuff like that. While she's in the other room. Um, Murder never told Uncle Clifford about them performing there. So Uncle Clifford wasn't prepared. So he was kind of upset with that. But he ain't too upset because that means extra money for him. Anyway, they talking and they having a little back and forth. So Tina Snow finally joined them or whatever. And they had this back and forth. So forth. Oh, y'all got nice girls here. The pink dot, 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 dot. Nineveh come and say, hey, you got a client, Mur um, Uncle Clifford, you got a client over in the um, Paradise Room. And, and Mur Lil Murder gets upset. When the fuck you start having a client? Bitch, don't worry about when I start having a client. Bitch, I'm here for the money. I, I own this shit, not you. Lil Murder is real jealous about somebody wanting to pay, pay for 
Uncle Clifford or pay the Uncle Clifford to do whatever it is that Uncle Clifford gonna do to them. He's real jealous. Anyway, we then see Toy outside crying. Boo-hoo crying. Oh, I'm going to get evicted. Oh, they about to repo my car. Oh, and Whisper listening to that bullshit. Baby, roulette calm and look at her. Girl, that's too bad. She, she said, you about to be homeless, sir. I was like, <laughs> I was there before. She was like, well, you about to be homeless, sir. I don't know what to tell you. But Whisper then talks to Roulette, and she talks to Roulette into giving her some money. So she was like, I'm going to pay you a toy set. I'm going to pay you back. And she said, mm, -mm. Mm -mm, you don't got to pay me back. She said, that's your pay. Now, I was wondering, what does that mean? By her saying, that's your pay. Pay for what? I don't know. Y'all get in the comment section and let me know what that was paid for. Because I ain't understand that part. Like, what is she paying her for? We'll see, I guess. Back down in the paradise room, child, it's Corbin in there, honey. He tell Uncle Clifford, listen, I need, I need that satisfaction. You know, Corbin is into the BDSM shit. Now, he tells Uncle Clifford, how much did Haley pay for this shit? $250. Well, let me give you $250,000 because I want to, I pay for what I want. I took that as meaning, I'm going to give you this $250,000. I know the referendum going to pass. So let me give you this money as a peace offering. That's what I took that as him saying, listen. You about to lose this club. Get over it, bitch. But here's two hundred thousand dollars that'll help out your cause, and maybe you won't be as destitute as you was. Cause girl, I don't know what to tell you. But he he also wanted his BDSM, so he gave Uncle Clifford the uh, a whip in a little box for him to whip him with. I noticed the prosthetic peen that they had on Corbin is a lot bigger. I mean, you ain't see the whole thing. You only saw the base, but it was still a lot bigger and a lot thicker than his real peen that we saw last season. Because that shit was real. Now, he could be a grower and not a shower. But, baby, that's a lot of growing. Anyway, we pays attention to all of the peens around here. I mean, did y'all see that that way? Where that was where you felt like... I felt like him, Corbin, doing that was him paying off Uncle Clifford for the pink. That too, because he said, I'll, I'll give you the same thing because I pay for what I want. So I felt like that was him giving him $250,000 to pay for the pay. We then see Andre. Andre at the club and, and Corbin joins them after he done got his ass what, bleeding through his shirt and shit. They waiting for the results. So they went down to the paint to go celebrate at the paint because they think they possibly have won the uh, mayoral election. The strippers and stuff showing them a good time and all of this good shit. He goes up there and makes announcements and talks to the people and all of this, that, and the third. Um, and, you know, you try to twerk and all of that. It's just real corny and shit. But um, it is what it is. Meanwhile, back in another part of the bank, um, Big L and Duffy is coming through. And they pass by Roulette. And Roulette and Duffy um, have words and whatnot. And Roulette, you know, is feeling, uh, I mean, Duffy is feeling Roulette. Roulette ain't trying to give him no play. He was like, well, I want to know what he said. I wrote that. He wrote, who pleases you? And, she, and he started uh, looking down at her box. And he was like, well, what you going to do? If you're going to do something, go ahead and do it. And he inserts digits or fingers or appendages. The finger go up in the cooch, okay? Shit not. So... She was feeling it. Baby, you sticking a finger up in ain't gonna do nothing for me. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. A finger ain't gonna do. Anyway, Andre and Autumn are in another part of the paint talking and he tried to kiss her. She was like, mm -mm. The the newly elected mayor don't need to see um don't need to have people see him kissing on his mistress. Baby, come on down with me. Let's go to your house. I got some shit to talk to you about. Because he had asked her, he said, have you ever thought about leasing the paint instead of selling it? And she was like, that means I would have to stay and chuck a lease. Mm -mm. I ain't trying to stay here. Um, and so that's when she was like, mm -mm, let's go to your house. I got some shit to talk to you about. She got shit to talk to him about. She just want to get her box to be there. Anyway, 
we get to the performance of Tina Snow, <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion, and Lil Murder. And they perform. While they performing, they got the stripper. They got Mississippi Roulette, Whisper. They all performing. Um, um, they all dancing during the performance of the pole. And so, you got Mercedes. She did come, but she ain't in her stripper clothes. She ain't in civilian clothes, baby. She just got on a cute little, you know, blouse and some pants. And Maine, they're with her. And Maine was like, damn, that whole Mississippi look like this. She dancing like it's her last time. And Mercedes was like, mm-hmm. I think this might be her last time. Anyway, um, while the performance is going on, um, they out there performing Murder and um, Tina Snow. And so, Maine don't went to the other side of the club and started to get into it with somebody. And I think the guy he started to get into it with was a part of Lil Murder's gang. Baby, they start fighting, and next thing you know, a whole ass brawl, a melee breaks out. It starts a performance like they, it, it shuts everything. I mean, it's a whole melee. And so, you see Poe, Poe, Mississippi, she on the ground, scared. <laughs> I mean, she's afraid and scared for her life. She on the ground like, oh my God, oh my God. And um, Diamond comes and rescues her. You know, his fine ass. He comes and rescues her. And when he rescues her and takes her to the back, she plants a fat ass kiss. A long, fat ass kiss on him. And after a few seconds, now he stayed in that kiss for a little for a little minute now. Then he pulled away and he's like, what you doing, Mississippi? Meanwhile, on the other side of the room, they don't even see that Big Bone sees Mississippi kissing up on uh, um, Diamond. Now, as is usual with these kinds of things, they always see the kissing. They don't see the man pull away. They don't see the man talk to the, lady, to the girl and say, hey, what you did that for? I wasn't trying to do that. They only see the kissing part, child mess. Anyway, Uncle Clifford takes Lil Murder to the back, like, because Lil Murder done got in the melee, too. That's his gang, so he fighting and everything. He doesn't, what the fuck are you doing, bitch? The fuck are you trying to get my, I told you, I don't want another murder. Now. I don't want this shit. Listen, Lil Murder done, done morphed into the gang version. He ain't the Lil Murder that be at Uncle Clifford's house now. That's all sensitive. And so, nah, he done went full-fledged gangster, you know, gangstalicious. He wouldn't be thug -nificent. He would be gangstalicious. He don't win full gangstalicious. And he, you know, he all, you know, all of the in energy, the machismo, the the adrenaline, everything. You know, he rah, 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 all that rah, 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 all that, you know, thug shit. And during all of this, it, I think it kind of reminded Uncle Clifford, yeah, this is that side that you don't get to see. The side that you may not like a whole lot. This is, if you're going to be with him, this is a part that you have to accept with that. You don't just get to have the one that want to be all lovey-dovey and touchy-feely and kissy with you. You have to accept this part, too. Maybe um, he kind of admitted to Uncle Clifford that, listen, I I, I, I knocked down one of the people. I killed one of the people. And that's when Uncle Clifford was like, was, was that the dude that, you, that we had to cover up? Was that what happened when we had to cover up what you had going on when you showed up at my house? You're like, nah, nope, nope. That's a whole nother situation. Which means that Uncle Clifford still don't know nothing about our dog, Big T. He still don't know about Big T. You better tell Uncle Clifford about our dog, Big T. Anyway, Uncle Clifford uh, said, listen, well, you got apparently you're going to have a lot of people like, you need to get Diamond or somebody to be secured. He was like, nah. Because he's, you know, Lil Murder's still, oh, he's still got that blood pumping, the adrenaline pumping, the endorphin, the endorphins running through his veins. He was like, I don't need no motherfucking security. I can be security for my own goddamn security. He's the only one. I can be my own, I can be my own goddamn security. Bad idea. But anyway, he, he storms out, kicking shit down. Uncle, when he leaves, Uncle Clifford is mad and, like, kicks one of the boxes. And out of the box flies out a huge pack of pills. And now Uncle Clifford knows about what Big L and Duffy been you know, doing. They've been running them pills and shit and all of them, you know, opioids and drugs through the club. We then cut away to Andre's house. Him and Haley roll up in the door kissing and making out and rubbing on each other because they get ready to fuck down. And they turn around 
And who's waiting already inside? How did anybody get in these people's house? Y'all don't lock fucking doors in this bitch. I just be wanting to understand how everybody be. Remember Haley was in his house that one time? And now who we got in the house when him and Haley is trying to fuck his wife. How the fuck the wife get in the goddamn house without a key? I don't know. Anyway, can you lock your door, Andre, please? But the wife, <laughs> so the wife is like, bitch, is this your campaign manager? A mess. Back down to the paint. Um, Uncle Clifford confronts Big L about selling um, drugs or whatever. And Big L said, listen, I ain't selling. I'm just holding. He was you know, like, yeah, that's how the shit starts until, you know, family members and people you love end up dead and gone. And stuff. I ain't got time for this. I don't want no part of this. I told you I don't want no part of this. Um, and so Big L tries to deflect. <laughs> that was smart, Big L. You worried about me? You need to be worried about that red bone light skin bitch. You need to try and kill that bitch. She the one holding us back. It ain't me. Don't worry about what I got going on. You need to worry about that light skin bitch. Talk about Haley. Mm -mm, bitch. Don't try and deflect, bitch. You doing what I told you not to do. Matter of fact, you're fired. You can't fire me. I motherfucking quit. And he walks out. A mess. A mess. Uncle Clifford then gets a call. We don't know who, they never tell us who it's from, but he was like, is this about my grandmother? So I'm assuming it's the hospital. We don't know, does that mean Miss Ernestine Steen dead? What does that mean? I'm assuming, I'm just going to make an assumption that it means that Miss Ernestine done, you know, transition, but we don't know. They might, it might have been somebody else. It may not even have to do with his grandmother. It might have been somebody or something else, but I'm just going, you know, like we always thinking that it's the hospital calling about his uh, grandmother's transitioning. We then um, see um, Lil Murder in the Paradise Room listening to some music on his earphone, and Mercedes walks in. And he, he you know, he, he make a small talk. He asks her why you ain't uh, dance with the pack tonight or whatnot. And um, he talks about, yeah, you still make me nervous, man. You the legend around here, this, that, and the third. And then you have all this small talk that I really didn't care about. But then he lets her listen to it. So he's like, listen to this. That's it. Apparently, it's this new song. And he wants her opinion on it. Um, because that's what he was listening to. I wonder, though. Like, I feel like Katori and Patrick Ian Polk and the other executive producers and people in the writer's room. There's a very real reason why we had this scene between... Lil Murder and and um, Mercedes. I don't know what it is. I'm sure we'll get it next episode. The next episode is the season finale. But there's a very real reason why we had this scene between Lil Murder and Mercedes. Anyway, because she even said, oh, I thought Keyshawn was your whole. He was like, nah, you the legend. So I wonder if now that Keyshawn's supposed to be leaving, if he's going to have Mercedes as his new girl. And remember, Mercedes went and saw herself in all of these pictures down to the um, the exhibit, and she starts to appreciate her own self-worth. I don't know, but there was a very real reason why we had to see. In the parking lot, Diamond over there trying to break up everything. Um... um that gang that Maine is in, um, is still at it with Lil Murder's gang. They still going at it. Diamond come and break it up or whatnot. So, um, Pico baby mama was like, I know Lil Murder did it. I know he did it. He killed my he killed my baby daddy. He killed Pico and she don't have no poop, but she just say she know it's Lil Murder. Meanwhile, we see Big Bone on the side on this motorcycle up and set. About the fact that Mississippi don't get kissed up on Diamond. She look at that pictures of her and Diamond first. Then she look at pictures of that ring. Knowing how significant that ring is to Diamond. And the fact he told her don't touch that shit. But we knew that shit was coming in. We knew she was going to end up either stealing the ring or doing something with that ring. Child, it's going to be a mess. Montavious coming back. You know what that means. Because that's Montavious ring. So you know what that means, honey. And finally... The last thing we see is, Lil, uh, is Mississippi leaving a message on a mirror, on a vanity mirror in the locker room in lipstick that says, I think, 
I'll be your sister forever or something like that on there. And Uncle Clifford sees her and he's kind of upset. He's like, you're just going to leave like that? And they have a little moment where they reconcile and they make peace with each other. He gives her a hug and he says, listen, fly away. Get far away. Don't come back. And that's, uh, and we leave off at base because after that she leaves and Uncle Clifford just sits down and just takes it all in. You know, he, he got a lot going on and he's just taking it all in. And it says to be continued and it goes off from there. Listen, I know this episode was set up for next episode, but I, I wanted more. I feel like they're going to connect. I trust them enough at this point to connect more of the dots next episode but this was probably my least favorite episode because i don't like when everything that i think is going to happen actually happens so we'll see what happens but i don't like when everything i predict is really what happens so let's get in the comment section y'all know how we do y'all tell me what y'all saw whatever i missed y'all put in the comment section and let's argue argue about what we saw that's all i got for y'all until next time thank y'all for coming y'all drive safely i'm out